today on behalf of the Nobel Committee. To the world, Martin Luther King Jr. had come to symbolize the success of nonviolent strategy. He received the Nobel Peace Prize in December 1964. And a gold medal. But in America, young militants were beginning to challenge King's leadership. Dallas County, Selma, Alabama. For more than a year, organizers from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, had worked with local residents in waging a voter registration campaign. They met solid resistance. By the end of 1964, SNCC was exhausted with little money to continue. Selma's black leaders turned to Martin Luther King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference for help. Today marks the beginning of a determined, organized, mobilized campaign. King's presence reopened an old rivalry between the ministers of SCLC and the young organizers of SNCC. We felt that there should be a projection and an organization of indigenous leadership, I mean leadership from the community, whereas the Southern Christian Leadership Conference took the position that Martin was the charismatic leader who was mainly responsible for, for raising money and they raised most of the money off of his leadership. But this differences in leadership then led to differences in style of work. We wanted a movement that would survive the loss of our lives. Therefore, the necessity to build a broad-based movement and not just a charismatic leader. SNCC and SCLC put aside their differences and launched a combined effort on January 18, 1965. The Dallas County Courthouse steps became a dramatic stage as prospective voters lined up for the registrar's office inside. The key actor was Sheriff Jim Clark. Movement leaders counted on Clark to draw media attention, the kind of attention that would interest Washington and win voting rights legislation. I am a segregationist. I do not believe in biracial committees. Selma's political leaders understood the movement's tactics and were desperate not to get caught in the middle. Mayor Joseph Smitherman and his public safety director, Wilson Baker, hoped to restrain the volatile Sheriff Clark as he dealt with the demonstrators. They picked Selma just like a movie producer would pick a set. You had the right ingredients. I mean, you'd have to have seen Clark in his day. Uh, he had a helmet liner like General Patton. He had the clothes, the Eisenhower jacket, the swagger stick, and then Baker was very impressive, and I guess I was the least of all. I was 145 pounds and a crew cut and big ears, so you had a young mayor with no background or experience. Our city and our county has been subjected to the greatest pressures I think any community in the country has had to withstand. We've had in our area here outside agitation groups of all levels. We've had Martin Luther King, uh, King pardon me, sir, Martin Luther King. We have had people of the Nazi Party, the States' Rights Party. Both of these groups have come in. They have continually harassed and agitated us for approximately three or four weeks. More than half of Dallas County citizens were black, but less than 1% were registered by 1965. Throughout much of the South, Custom and law had long prevented blacks from registering. In Selma, the registrar's office was open only two days a month. Registrars would arrive late, leave early, and take long lunch hours. Few blacks who lined up would get in. 
and getting in was no guarantee of being registered. President Johnson knew the problem, and now, having soundly defeated conservative Barry Goldwater in the recent election, he set this goal. I propose that we eliminate every remaining obstacle to the right and the opportunity to vote. But Johnson's staff had doubts about pushing for more legislation. I think those of us who had been involved day in and day out uh, in civil rights litigation and getting the, the, the uh, 1964 Civil Rights Act through Congress uh, were the people who were dragging our feet and wanted breathing room. The president didn't want that. He said, get it and get it now because we'll never have a better opportunity to get legislation on any subject including civil rights that we have right now in 1965. We have the majority to do it, we can do it. Although Sheriff Clark tried to control his temper, the strain began to show. In mid-January, he arrested Mrs. Amelia Boynton, a highly respected community leader. Angered by Mrs. Boynton's arrest, 105 local teachers marched to the courthouse in protest, knowing they might be fired by the white school board. Place of business seems to think you can take it to just to be uh, Disneyland or something on parade. Do you have business in the courthouse? We just want to pass. Do you have any business in the courthouse? The only business we have was to come back to the Board of Registrars to register. The Board of Registrars is not in session this afternoon as you went for them. So I saw then that he was not going to arrest us as I really wanted him to do. Therefore, we asked that teachers then would uh, regroup, and we marched back, not to the school, but to Brown Chapel Church, at which time there was a rally here. The Teachers' March was the first black middle-class demonstration in Selma. Cheyenne Webb and Rachel West were school children at the time. And it was amazing to see how many teachers had participated. I remember vividly on that day when I saw my teachers marching with me, you know, just for the right to vote. And it was, teachers then was somewhat like up in the upper class, you know, people look up to teachers then and look up to preachers. They were somewhat like leaders for us back then. Then the undertakers got a group and they marched. The beauticians got a group, they marched. Everybody marched after teachers marched because teachers had more influence than they ever dreamed in the community. And we want you to know, gentlemen, that every one of you, see, we know your badge numbers, we know your names. In mid-February, Reverend C.T. Vivian, an SCLC organizer, confronted Sheriff Clark and his deputies on the courthouse steps. But believe me, there were those that followed Hitler, like you blindly follow this Sheriff Clark, who didn't think their day would come. But they also were pulled into the courtrooms, and they were also given their death sentences. You are not this bad a racist, but you're a racist in the same way that Hitler was a racist. And you're blindly following a man that's leading you down a road that's going to bring you into federal court. Now, 
that I am representing people in Dallas County, and I have that right to do so. Now, and as I represent them, and they can speak for themselves, is what I'm saying true? Yeah. Is it what you think and what you believe? Yeah. For this is not a local problem, gentlemen. This is a national problem. You can't keep anyone in the United States from voting without hurting the rights of all other citizens. Democracy's built on this. This is why every man has the right to vote, regardless. And he started shouting at me that I was a Hitler, I was a brute, that I was a Nazi. I don't remember all everything he called me. And I did lose my temper then. And we have come to be here because they are registering at this time. Well, and that's so right. we I have come, and we have come to me and I can't enforce the law without right, my face. We have come to register. And, uh, uh, and this is our reason for being here. We're not still binding me with that light. We're not, we're not moving. Move back. I don't rem remember even hitting him, but I f went to the doctor and got an x-ray and found out I had a linear fracture and a finger on my left hand. With Jim Clark, it was a clear engagement between the forces of movement and the forces of the structure that would destroy movement. It was a clear engagement between those who wished the fullness of their personalities to be met and those that would destroy us physically and psychologically. You do not walk away from that. This is what movement meant. Movement meant that finally we were encountering on a mass scale the evil that had been destroying us on a mass scale. You do not walk away from that. You continue to answer it. If we're wrong, why don't you arrest us? Why don't you get out in front of the camera and go on? It doesn't matter being in front of the camera. Oh, it's a matter of facing it. your sheriff and facing it. your judge. We're willing to be beaten for democracy. And you misuse democracy in the street. You beat Why people you bloody in order that they will not have the privilege to vote. You beat me in the side and then hide your blows. No, I don't even need to leave. We have come to register to vote. I'm here to tell you tonight that the businessmen, the mayor of this city, the police commissioner of this city, and everybody in the white power structure of this city must take a responsibility for everything that Jim Clark does in this community. It's time for us to say to these men that if you don't do something about it, we will have no alternative but to engage in broader and more drastic forms of civil disobedience in order to bring the attention of the nation to this whole issue in Selma, Alabama. The campaign in Selma escalated when violence erupted during a march in a neighboring town. The march in Marion, Alabama was a nighttime march, and a nighttime march was always dangerous. And there was always discussion within the movement whether or not they had nighttime marches because they knew they were dangerous. We went up there this night, and we knew there was going to be trouble right away because local folks came up to us and threatened us, sprayed our cameras with black paint so we couldn't shoot, ordered us to put the cameras down, and harassed us. And it was a very tense situation. It's time for us to say to these men that if you don't do something about it, we will have no alternative but to engage in broader and more drastic forms of civil disobedience in order to bring the attention of the nation to this whole issue in Selma, Alabama. The campaign in Selma escalated when violence erupted during a march in a neighboring town. The march in Marion, Alabama was a nighttime march, and a nighttime march was always dangerous. And there was always discussion within the movement whether or not they had nighttime marches because they knew they were dangerous. We went up there this night, and we knew there was going to be trouble right away because local folks came up to us and threatened us, sprayed our cameras with black paint so we couldn't shoot, ordered us to put the cameras down, 
and harassed us. And it was a very tense situation.